Everyone tells you what you should make on the griddle, but what shouldn't you make? Or what's overrated? What's underrated? Well, after four years and 250 griddle videos, I can confidently say I'll probably never make pizza again. I did pizza three different ways. Uh, they weren't terrible, but it wasn't worth the effort in my opinion. I can't see a reason to not do it in the oven next time. So first what I did is like a Pillsbury dough, which you know isn't great to begin with. And I had to roll it out really thin because we don't have any heat coming from the top to cook these pizzas. Now could you also cover it with a dome? Yes, you can, but that's just too much work for a makeshift bad oven when you have a working oven in your kitchen. Uh, I also did one a non bread and one tortilla. The tortilla one, I would say probably is best, but you gotta flip all of them to cook both sides. And then you add your toppings. And as you would imagine, you didn't really get a good melt or anything on that cheese because again, there's no heat from the top. It's all just coming from the griddle. So I ended up with what looks like a bad pizza from a cafeteria at school or maybe a gas station and look we've all been on hard times i've enjoyed my fair share of gas station pizza i'm just saying there's a lot better options to do it inside and there's a lot better options of things to make on your griddle so i don't think you should really make pizza on the griddle the flying dutchman became very popular this past summer but i didn't really enjoy it when i made it mainly because it was really messy and hard to eat due to your hamburger buns being replaced with onions now that's probably why it's popular because these onions look great in a picture and it gets a lot of clicks on videos. Uh, but also a lot of comments I got in my video when I did it were saying this technically isn't how it should be made in that at in and out they will put the onion in between the two patties or sometimes the Flying Dutchman is just two patties, cheese and no bun. I don't know, I'm an Ohio boy. I think I've only been to in and out one time in my life so I'm just going off the recipes that I saw explode on the scene this summer which the way they do it is two grilled onions then you do two smash burgers add your cheese some sort of sauce which is like a burger sauce or a copycat in and out uh, animal style sauce and then you know you use your onions as the bun and it becomes like a knife and fork burger I understand some people want that they're avoiding carbs but it's not my cup of tea and honestly, if I made something like this again, it wouldn't be this burger. I'd make a real burger with bun, two patties, and then maybe put a slice of grilled onion in between the patties just to make sure it's all like, you know, able to be eaten. I did some nachos on my two burner Blackstone because it had a lid to shut down. Basically, you brown some ground beef, add taco seasoning, then you put your foil down, chips, cheese, put your meat back on top, shut the lid. This again, there wasn't enough heat coming from the top. Um, I mean, you'll see a theme in these ones that I don't want to make again. So the cheese didn't really melt, you know? Which a lot of people recommend like making or buying like a cheese sauce. That's a little more creamy and liquidy. So you don't have to try to melt the shredded cheese. Uh, this would definitely have made it a lot easier, um, but not worth it in my opinion. This is, this is just too easy again to do inside on your stove with a cheese sauce or just use a shredded cheese and pop it in the oven. Uh, so, I, you know, I don't know. There's just way better recipes to make. Where I saw this a lot was in the vertical videos. People having a party, you know, and doing nachos on their griddle. And if I was having a party, honestly, and I wanted to use the griddle and I wanted nachos, like I prepped the beef during the day, maybe some fajita veggies, put your canned cheese in a crock pot and then put your meat in another crock pot and let people build their own nachos you know then for the griddle if i want to use the griddle for the party i just make smash burgers which aren't that hard if you prep ahead the little balls of beef and you can really make them about two minutes each and give everybody kind of like smash burgers to order so i understand the idea it looks kind of cool to have all your nachos out spread out on your griddle and stuff but I'd rather just use a crock pot and utilize my griddle at parties for other things like smash burgers or fried rice. Everybody loves it when you pretend your backyard is like a Japanese steakhouse. Bacon and sausage and pancake batter. Uh, this was a hit a while ago. I saw people dipping these sausages in bacon and pancake batter. It looks cool. You think you're going to end up with some like breakfast corn dog concoction like you work at the county fair or something. But it, it's, I don't know, it's just, it looks better than it tastes, you know? It's one of those things that, like, it's, all, it's what's on the inside that counts, folks, you know? Remember what your mom says, not the outside, it's what's on the inside. Like, I did these sausage patties, I dipped them, flipped them, and they didn't quite cook all the way on the side, so that was, like, 
a pain. If I did it again, I would just make silver dollar pancakes and put a sausage patty in between them. And then with the bacon, you pour the batter right on top of the bacon when it's almost done. And I, I'd rather just chop the bacon up and throw it into a regular pancake. This, this ended up like almost too much bacon grease and I just didn't think it was very good and I would probably not ever do this again. I did chicken wings twice on the griddle, once trying to fry them in a cast iron and once putting them straight on the griddle. First off, if you have a smoker, let's be honest, that's the best way to do chicken wings. Like, it just is, you know? If not, probably the next best way is the oven. Uh, to be honest, I mean, just the easiest, and if you have a wire rack and you throw them in the oven, that's really good too. Putting them straight on the griddle does work. Uh, get some color on the skin, and I will say, though I would never do this again at home, if you're tailgating or camping and you really want wings, this is an option that works. You can do them straight on the griddle. As for deep frying, that took forever. That took way too long for the oil to heat up. And I didn't even use a large cast iron pan. I used like a six inch one and it only held six wings at a time. So overall it was like, that's just, it took way too long. And you could also use a foil pan, but that actually brings us to the overrated things on the griddle. So deep frying, you know, um, you know, is my first one for this category. Um, I did those wings. I did some nachos for fajitas nachos. Both worked, but I just don't think they were worth it. First off, like I said, it took a long time to get the oil to temperature. You could probably preheat your cast iron inside, then bring it out, which would be hot. So obviously you need to use some oven mitts but that would help you get there quicker. Or you could use a foil pan like I did here. But when I did that, a lot of people brought up a very good point, which is you got that much oil in a pan. What if you get a little hole in the side and then like all of it comes rushing out and somehow gets down to your burner and all of a sudden your griddle's on fire. So a little bit of oil in a pan, you know, probably would catch by your grease trap, but like that much oil, like I did for these nachos, could probably start a pretty big fire. So I don't think I'll really be doing that again. Uh, the only reason that I have this as overrated rather than don't make is the shallow fry like I did in this foil pan. That's not a ton of oil in there. You can see I did chimichangas in there um, and you could easily do like a shallow fry. I'm talking like, you know, less than a half inch of oil in there. So if it does get a hole, it's not a big deal. It'll go down your grease trap. It's not that much oil. So that's something you can do. Or you can just do it straight shallow fry, like putting a lot of oil on your griddle like I did with this chicken parm here, which apparently I thought was a good idea to shoot at night. I don't know. This is like my fifth video when I did this. Like, you know what people want to see? Midnight griddle, and that's what they want to see. Anywho, it's overrated because you see people do it. You see people do fish fries, and there's different frying, but I just, I think just buy a fryer for outside if you really, really want to fry. Otherwise, it's... It's not worth all the prep and, and kind of the risk of the danger that you're putting the possibility of, you know, starting a fire. Biscuits and cinnamon rolls. You can still see a theme here. Anything that's usually baked in the oven is better in the oven. Now I'm guilty of this. I've done this in a bunch of videos. And like, look, again, you can recreate the oven with your wire rack and your dome, but it's just so much easier to throw your biscuits in the oven inside and just kind of try to time them out with the rest of your breakfast. Um, rather than trying to do them on the griddle or they could burn if you put them directly on the griddle like i had some biscuits get too dark but you know two reasons why this is a overrated rather than a don't make one cinnamon rolls smashed are pretty good and worth trying it's different than a regular cinnamon roll it gets you a little bit of crust on there it's not the same type of soft center it's it's a really a flat puck but it's worth trying uh, and the other reason is, again, tailgating and camping. If you really want to do some biscuits or some cinnamon rolls while you're camping, you can do it. You know, you can do it. And I think, though, they're not going to be perfect. And they're not going to be as good as an oven. It would still be nice to be able to do while you're out in the campground or tailgating for some football games. Smash taco is basically a smash burger with tortilla rather than a bun. Again, this looks very nice and extremely interesting in the photos, which is probably why it blew up. You put your meatball down, top it with the tortilla, then smash the whole thing. Now, you don't need parchment paper, which is nice because the tortilla acts as the divider between the meat and the smasher. I then top this thing like a Big Mac with lettuce, onion, pickle, and Thousand Island dressing because that's what a lot of the popular videos and a lot of the things I saw were doing. And this is where I think it gets overrated. I don't I don't want it to be dressed up like a burger with a tortilla. I'd rather just have a Big Mac smash burger. Um, I did have a lot of people comment that they did it 
and they did it like a taco. They did taco seasoning and then they add taco toppings and that makes a lot more sense to me. So the smash taco as a burger to me with burger toppings and pickles and stuff was just weird and overrated if you're going to do it. And when I, if I try it again, I should say, I will probably try it more as a taco with taco seasoning and maybe lettuce, tomato and stuff like that. Smashed potatoes. Okay, these smashed potatoes, some of it could have been user error, but it was a lot of work for a mediocre potato. You boil some very small potatoes, then you smash them on the griddle. My potatoes may have been a bit too large. Um, I may give it another go with a smaller one, but still, uh, boiling all these potatoes, and you take them out, you get a butter garlic parsley mixture, and you kind of brush the top of them with that, and then you add some Parmesan cheese if you want to. Um, I, I just, I don't know. It seemed like too much work for me for what is a side dish. If I'm going to do all the smashing and stuff, I'd rather have the burgers and maybe just do some regular diced red skin or yellow potatoes on the griddle or throw some tots straight on the griddle and I would just add the garlic butter mixture to that so I didn't have a good time with the smashed potatoes I, I think they were a little overrated the crack burger blew up about a year and a half ago as well this is where you take ground beef you add sour cream cheese bacon and the ranch dressing seasoning to it uh, you patty it up make some burgers out of that I did this twice and both times they fell apart on me again I'm not ruling out this being my fault. I'm certainly not perfect. It just didn't seem to work well for me. Um, also, I thought the ranch dressing mix was way overpowering and felt too salty. Um, I used a whole packet for a pound of ground beef. Next time, if I do these burgers, I'm not gonna do it this way. What I would do is I would probably only use like half the ranch mix for one pound of ground beef. And then I would just put the bacon and cheese on top of the burger and just have it be like that maybe i add a little bit of sour cream to the beef to help but i think that was part of making it fall apart as well so um yeah i thought it was overrated and and i don't really know if i'll try it again five underrated okay i'll have a video of all these linked below if you want like the full recipe this is just an overview Hollow french toast look regular diner style french toast is great but nothing compares to the hollow bread and the secret is just the bread. The bread's thicker, it's better on the inside. You cut it real thick to about an inch slice per each one, then you let it sit out for an hour or overnight to kind of dry out. For the French toast custard, you step it up a bit by using heavy cream instead of milk. Then you do your regular sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg, vanilla, orange zest, and eggs. Mix it all together with a hand mixer. Now look, you keep your griddle real low, around 300 degrees on this one, because you're cooking these pretty long. You, and you don't do a quick dunk either with the bread, like you would with like a, what I would call a diner style French toast. You actually let it sit in there for two to three minutes. Add your butter to the griddle, and then you put your French toast on there, and you cook them five to seven minutes per side. So you're, I mean, normal French toast doesn't quite take that long. But this one you're cooking for a while because you want to cook all the way through. It's soaked up a bunch of that custard and you want it to cook all the way through, but your temperature is low so you don't burn the outside of the French toast. Very, very good. Beautiful outside, almost like a bread pudding inside. I highly recommend it. Tater tot hash browns. I know everyone likes shredded hash browns, but trust me, the tater tot hash browns might be better. All you do is take some frozen tots, pop them in the microwave for about a minute. You put them on the griddle, you can smash them down, or if you want, you can put them in an egg ring to try to make them look nice and pretty. But you smash them down, decent amount of oil, and then let them cook around 400 degrees for 10 minutes. Do not touch them or flip them for 10 minutes, just like the same method as shredded hash rounds, but with tater tots and you defrosted them in the microwave. So 10 minutes, don't touch them. After that, you give them a flip and you got this crispy tater tot with a soft potato center. So crispy outside, soft inside. No need to season them because these frozen tots have tons of salt already. These are like stupid simple and I really think you should give them a try. Burrito meal prep. The only thing better than a breakfast burrito is a frozen one that you can reheat in like 60 to 90 seconds on a weekday morning. You're going to cook up a pound of sausage. Then add some diced veggies, shredded potatoes to your griddle as well. 
After your veggies and potatoes get cooked, let's say five minutes, then you can make a little well to pour in eight scrambled eggs straight into the middle. This will keep your eggs contained and prevent them from going all over the griddle. Um, and also it's lowered your temperature so you won't burn these scrambled eggs. Once the eggs set up, you go ahead and mix in your sausage. So this is all sausage, potato, veggie, eggs. This is your filling of your burrito. So you pull it off the griddle, you go inside and I start building my burritos. You do two spoonfuls of filling, cheese, salsa, roll them up, put them in the freezer. In the morning, I just pull them out of the freezer, wrap them in a wet paper towel, 60 to 90 seconds, depending on the size of the burrito, and boom, you got yourself a nice breakfast to start your day. Italian sausage sandwich. Now, everyone knows that Italian sausages are good. That's not underrated. I mean, uh, duh. And they're good on the griddle or the grill or the oven. It doesn't matter. And you're probably doing them with the obvious thing, which is peppers and onions. So that's not underrated either. I mean, how are you going to do an Italian sausage without peppers and onions, right? I think the often missed or underrated part on the griddle is the cheese and some marinara. You can add a pot of marinara to your griddle while the sausages and peppers and onions cook up. Uh, then once they're done, you make a pile with the veggies and you put your provolone cheese on there, add your sausage, steam it with some water to make sure it all melts, top it with your bun, flip it over. So now that cheese is in the middle getting even more melty. And then you add your marinara from the corner and you just oh it's just such a great sandwich and i really just think you can take it over the top with the griddle by adding the marinara and the cheese steak is better on a griddle than a grill there i said it look i know this is going to ruffle some feathers but i believe it i really do not because i'm some culinary expert i'm just another idiot with a cell phone and a youtube channel i think it's better because most high-end steakhouse do it in a cast iron or carbon steel pan or something with a full flat surface to make contact with the entire steak and get a better crust that's the goal more crust more flavor more contact that's why i think it's better than grill grates the grill marks look great but that's not i don't know i don't think it gets you as good of a quality steak so anyways you can also add butter to your griddle and start basting the steak in the butter while it cooks like a garlic butter which, you know, that's pretty nice. You can't complain about that either. And then when you're done, you just put that garlic butter right on top of the steak while it rests. I go over the full process of me cooking a steak in the video that's on your screen now. I'd highly recommend watching that and giving a steak a try on your griddle if you have not done that yet. Thanks for watching. Keep on griddling, friends.